Hello, and welcome to my rat lab. I have been a big fan of the VAX VMS line of computers since 1985 when I was first introduced to them in college. For 25 years, I was involved in one way or another professionally as either a programmer, system administrator, or ultimately managing an environment of VMS systems. In about 1989, I was presented with AVEX 3100 for my desk at work. And ever since then, I have been wanting to get a 3100 for my personal use so that I can reacquaint myself with the VAX VMS system. We shut down our last VMS system in 2010. And since then, my professional environments have been 100% Microsoft Windows. But I've had a yearning to get back to the VMS days and acquire my own VAX system. So what I've done is I acquired a VAX station 3100, and I'm going to do a series of videos about trying to get this machine working. Um, as I have no confidence level that I will be able to get this very machine working, this may be just a series of videos as I'm trying different things and determining what is wrong with the system, what will never work, and it may possibly be that I'll have to acquire yet more hardware over time to ultimately reach my goal. For this reason, these videos will just be following my progress as I open the machine up and work on it and try to determine if I can even fix it. Unlike most of my videos where success is firmly in hand before I ever publish a video, these videos will be published as is. Therefore, I created a second channel so that I can upload my in-progress videos. They will not be finished videos. So I encourage you to take a look at my primary channel, Amateur Digital Electronics with the Mighty Pez. But until then, um, I hope to upload several videos as I open the system up, determine what's inside of it, and then determine what my next steps will be. Thank you. Let's look at the back panel connectors. From left to right, we have AUI Ethernet, which is switch selectable with 10 base T Ethernet, the reset button, keyboard, mouse, a 15 pin sync on green RGB video connector, serial printer, VT series serial console, and the diagnostic lights. Removing the case is as simple as loosening two screws on the back side and then sliding the top of the case forward to reveal the components inside. Upon opening the case, we note the first issue. The hard drives have been removed. Let's go ahead and remove the drive plate, which holds the SCSI card and what should be holding disk drives. Upon removing the drive plate, we see our next issue, significant corrosion around the battery connector. I take some pictures with my phone for further analysis and documentation. Although missing drives were an annoyance and a showstopper, corrosion is definitely the last thing we want to see on the PCB. I removed the memory daughter card from the main board. It is attached by two simple edge connectors. 
the memory card itself looks quite pristine. Next, I remove the screws holding the main board to the case. Yet another look at the corrosion. I'm going to attempt to remove the corrosion as best as possible with vinegar. After cleaning the board with vinegar, I will then clean the vinegar off with isopropyl alcohol. Here I am using a toothbrush to remove as much of the vinegar with isopropyl alcohol. After I complete this step, I will take the board down to my shop sink to more thoroughly flush the vinegar from the board. I removed the power supply from the case so that I could blow out all of the dust bunnies. Here I'll mount the PSU back onto the case. Two attached screws will hold the PSU in place. Now we'll power on the PSU with nothing attached to ensure that it doesn't blow up. Our next test is to put a multimeter on the power output pins of the disk drive power supply. Here we're looking for plus 5 and plus 12 volts. We may be a little low on the plus 12 volt pin. However, hopefully that's within tolerance. Our next step is to test all the voltages on the mainboard power supply connector. I reference the VacStation 3100 maintenance guide to compare expected to measured voltages. There is one anomaly on the PSU output pins. Pin 7 should be measuring 3.5 to 5.25 volts and is instead measuring 135 millivolts. All other pins measure with intolerance. Our next test is to connect the main board up to the power supply and see if we can determine the status from the diagnostic lights. Hopefully we'll see some kind of movement. Powering on the main board only results in the highest four lights coming on. We will go ahead and add the RAM board and see if that changes the diagnostic output. With the main board and RAM only, we now have all lights enabled. According to the service manual, the meaning of the diagnostic LEDs for the first result, the highest four bits being enabled means that the power is applied ROM code is successfully started and several instructions have been executed. However, when we added the RAM board, all eight lights came on. According to the definition, that means power is applied but no instructions are executed, so it's almost like we took a step backwards by adding the RAM board. So the current state of my VacStation 3100 project is that the motherboard PCB corrosion has been removed as best as possible. We've tested the power supply. However, we found out that pin 7 
has an anomaly. We expect 3.5 to 5.25 volts. And what we saw was something around 133 to 135 millivolts. All other pins seem nominal. According to the diagnostic LEDs, when we plugged the main board in, we got a 11110000, which meant the power is applied, the ROM code was successfully started, and several instructions have been executed. However, when we added the memory card, then we got all ones, which means that the power is applied, but no instructions are executed. I don't know if this tells me anything at this point, so further research is necessary. Next steps are researching options for connecting a laptop via USB to the serial port using the digital MMJ connector type, researching power supply pin 7 issues, there's the possibility that we may need to replace the capacitors and the power supply, and seeing if there's any further information on the diagnostic LEDs. If you have any feedback, please comment in the video. Any further information would be highly appreciated. Thank you very much.